Hey guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary and I'm sitting here in the offices of Seagrest Farms. As you know, I have been in Florida for the past few days and I'll be here for a few days more to present to the aquarium clubs. And I also had the great opportunity to come down and talk to Seagrest Farms about nano fishes, freshwater dwarf invertebrates, as well as the husbandry and marketing of Asian hill stream species. So it's been a pretty fun trip. I've gotten to meet with you know, all the sales staff as well as tour the facilities and just brainstorm for some ideas I have for the future of the hobby. And it's been, it's been really exciting. Um, my good friend Sandy Moore, who's the president of Seagrest, has been my gracious host. And I was lucky enough that she took me around all over the place today to the various Seagrest facilities. Now, you know, most people have seen videos of Seagrest's primary facility where they do the bulk of their shipping. Um, and it's an incredible operation. There's conveyors that run through the center of it. Um, everything's color coded by order. It's, it's really an impressive operation. But where I got to go today um, as well was to see some of the breeding facilities where all of the neon tetras and cardinal tetras that are sold at like Petco and PetSmart are bred and raised. And it was, it was really fascinating. So I'd like to show you that. You know, so generally I do a Tuesday tip because it's Tuesday, but since I was on the injured list and then I was away, I decided instead to show you sort of a, a Thursday travel log. So we're gonna take a look at some of the various farms I went to today and uh, see what you guys think. So let's see about my adventure. So I'm here in a suburb of Tampa on a sort of secret fish farm that is all indoor where they breed, grow, and raise a ton of different fish, including cardinal and neon tetras. And I'm going to take you inside to have a look and we'll see what all they're working on. So this farm has 2,200 gallon concrete vats focusing on, in this room, plecos, also neon tetras, cardinal tetras, and glow light tetras. They utilize these giant fluidized sand bed filters, which are pretty awesome. And the brine shrimp hatchery. And what sort of production do you get on the cardinals? Like approximately how many do you raise? Just depending on the market, I mean, we used to do, what, a couple hundred thousand? Yeah. Um, uh, and again, uh, one of the big focuses is on the, the big box stores. So yep. uh, if the item's skewed for them, then we'll have, you know, three to five hundred uh, tanks in production at any given time. That's incredible. You know, neons have got to be... What are you guys doing neons, Sandy? I mean... I know we probably oh. send about 20,000 out of this facility. Yeah, yeah. it's something, it's in the millions. I don't yeah. remember how many. Right. It's crazy. That's Number one fish by far. <laughs> this entire facility is run by six people. It's incredible. They use styros with spawning grass to harvest eggs and grow out fry. Pretty interesting. This facility is considered to be exceptionally biologically secure, so no outside contaminants. So it does the bulk of the breeding of all the glow tetras uh, and other glow fish available in the market, as well as all the neons and cardinals for the Petcos and PetSmarts. This is a vat of just thousands of little fishes. It's neat. Last time I was down this way, I didn't really get to go see any of the pond farms. So I'm pretty water quality in the, the water table. This is actually the, the natural water table of the farm. Uh, we don't we run water for heat in the cold weather, but we can pump these ponds completely dry and they'll fill back up with water in four days. That's incredible. So uh, it's just a natural environment for good water. For producing fish. How deep are they? Uh, about six feet at the deepest part. Uh, really depends on the size of the pond as to how deep they get. We've got some over on the other farm that's 
twice as long and they get 12, 14 feet deep. Mm -hmm. Um, I also had the opportunity to go to the aquaculture lab again for the University of Florida, which works pretty closely with all of the Florida fish farmers, but specifically seagrest as well. And I was really geeked when I was there to see them working with a few species that are very near and dear to my heart. The first of which is the rainbow shiner, which you guys may remember I have in my 150 gallon that I just built. Um, just a really incredible species and they're working on spawning those um, so that there can be more production of them for the U.S. market. And the other thing that was really, really cool was that I got to see the spawning program for some polypterus, Senegalis specifically, the little tiny, well, little tiny, the smallest of the polypterus species. And you guys may remember in my big tank, I'm, I'm a bit of a primitive fish junkie and I have quite a few of the larger species in there. But it was really awesome to get to talk to the woman, Amy, who is working on breeding those fish and also see them at all sizes. And I never knew that they were a mop spawner, so that was pretty awesome. We also got to look through all the different marine rooms and also see a class that was taking place um, with a local college at the university, a visiting class to the university aquaculture lab. I'm now here at the Florida Aquaculture Lab, which is one of my favorite places on the planet. And we're gonna take a look through some of the facilities here in a few minutes and I'll see if I can show you guys some stuff. What's that? Polypterus Senegalis breeding project, which is incredible to me in particular. Our major push is for the blue tangs. Um, we'd really like to have some sort of aquaculture success with this species prior to that being released. To breed the lionfish to try to figure out some sort of biological control um, in the wild for them. Um, yeah, they're cool. The only we've gotten about five spawns, not from these guys, but from public aquariums. Um, well, sorry, I love I lumped rhinopias in there because we got about two or three rhinopia spawns. Yeah, I'm really love rhinopias, um, but they we didn't get them very far. Very difficult, uh, very small, and yeah, the egg masses were really. The, the rhinopus was like that, but then the lionfish was like that. Um, but really cool stuff. Twenty dollars a pound for the public. Lionfish? Really? I know there's like a. I've had it. It's actually very good. I bet it is. Yeah. I know there's a big effort down in the Keys to fish it and stuff like that. The piece is in larval fish culture, specifically the food that the larval fish eat. And so when it comes to microalgae and copepods and rotifers and artemia and daphnia and anything that is small and you need a microscope sometimes to check out what it really is, he is an expert at growing those animals and feeding them to larger fish. So that's, that's one of the things that he does. I yeah, okay. highly recommend it to any kids coming to the yeah. Because it's really lost. That idea of how to sell fish or what the market is demanding is sort of lost on us. Even my, I mean, I went through academic route. I still, I couldn't tell you. What that? that what price of that fish is, or what even that is? I mean, Five ninety nine at retail. There you go. Boom, and that's the, that's important. Yeah. So tomorrow we'll also be visiting Imperial Tropicals uh, as well as a plant farm, and you know I'll shoot some footage of that to show you guys later. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can see my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, as well as information on all things nano. Don't forget to tell me what you'd like to see or what, what species you'd like for me to, to discuss uh, in the comments below.